lined up. The Mark Hill Richmond Stakes Group 2 and a jump away. Early Mount Boy a little bit slow to stride and went slightly to his right. Toka Madeira well away towards the left. Uh, down the centre, Sketch in the black cap showing speed. Hala Amarati is tracking Toka Madeira with Van Dijk held up behind that pair. They're followed on the right by Bob Slay, a bit off the pace along with Nazalan and Bally Mount Boy. Not an overly fast pace, perhaps through the first furl and a half or so, and now they're stretching on down the hill, and it's Toka Madeira from Hala Emirat in sketch on the right. Van Dijk still getting cover behind Toka Madeira in the black and yellow stripes to the far side. Then Bally Mount Boy, Nazalan in the green and pink jacket and the red jacketed bobsleigh at the back of the field, heading on now towards the final quarter mile, and Van Dijk's got plenty of daylight on that far side. Toka Madeira still probably just leads the way down the near side sketch, and Halle Emirati Van Dijk begins to pick up quite stylishly. Far side drifting across to the far side though. Bally Mount Boy is running on with uh, Toka Madeira now reduced to third. It's Van Dijk that leads. Good run from Bally Mount Boy in second, trying to close on this leader. But Van Dijk is going to prove too good and follows up that debut Nottingham win to, to land the Richmond from Bally Mount Boy in second. Toka Madeira back in third. Halle Emirati, Bobsleigh, Sketch and Nazalem. It's the second win of the week for Andrea Seni here at the Qatar Goodwood Festival. He opened in the very first race with Lord Witherford, and now Van Dijk has won the Group 2 Richmond Stakes. That looked very good indeed. Uh, are the Christmas right to be quite excited about this horse? For sure, for sure. He was, it uh, was obviously a very expensive uh, yearling, you know, uh, a breeze up horse. And uh, he, like, at Nottingham, he did very well to win the race. When, when, when I missed a break by about six or seven lengths, I, I thought the race was over. Mm -hmm. I was happy to give him a chance and hopefully to get him to run on and run a promising race. And, and the ground was quite sticky that day. So you have to make up a bit of ground to catch up with him. And then I took him back and grabbed for a few strides. And I was very surprised when I let him down, he went again. And, uh, you know, for a breeze up horse, he's got a great mind. Mm -hmm. He's obviously got a beautiful pedigree. And, uh, you know, you never know when you step up into this sort of grade what a good they are, but uh, well, he showed that uh, he's obviously very smart. And had he learned plenty from that debut? If you know what, he all, he all he needed to learn is just come out, come out the stalls a little bit better. <laughs> Apart from that, he, he's got a very good mind. He's obviously a breeze up horse, so he knows his job. I think, like I said, the key because they obviously thought about going for another novice, maybe to teach him a bit more. But we had a good conversation a couple of weeks back, and I even said I think he's a horse that he's got a very good mind. He knows the job. Okay, needs to jump out, of, jump out of the stalls a little bit better, but I don't think he needs any more experience to take on those slightly better horses. Both starts now that he's raced, it's been soft ground. What do you think he'd handle quicker stuff? I, um, I, I, I do think he's, he's, he's a horse that needs a bit of juice in the ground. The ground is hard work there, it's quite sticky. I was actually very pleased that we ended up going racing up the middle because the start side is obviously with the racing they had on yesterday, it's, it's hard work. And uh, when we went up the middle, it's slightly fresher ground, and uh, he travelled good into it and he quickened up quite nicely. I do think he, the ground is a little bit important for him. Okay. He's got an. Oh, I think you have. Oh, no, no. I've got a ton, time to ask you a little bit more. He's entered over seven and over six. Would he get an extra furlong? Uh, he could well do. Um, obviously, we'll have to see. These horses, like I say, for the Breeze Up horse, he's got a very good mind. He switched off quite nicely behind the leaders. And I didn't think we went, we went that quick either for a six furlong race. But uh, he's got options anyway. It was nice to get this out of the way. At least we know he's decent. Yes. And then I'm sure the team will decide where to go next. What chances for a double on the day with Macanudo? Oh, Macanudo is, you know, I think he's obviously should go on the ground. And uh, we haven't got a very good draw, uh, 14 or 14. He's stepping up in trip uh, with a pair of blinkers on. You know, he's, he's on a handy mark. Hopefully he can get his head in front again today. Well, not again. He's head in front at some stage. <laughs> well, very yeah. best of luck. It hasn't yet. Yeah, <laughs> Congratulations. Maybe today can be the day. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> While his son Ed does all the hard work saddling chess piece, Simon is doing the post-race interviews for the Richmond Stakes because Van Dijk has just been a brilliant group team winner. Andrea Atzeni was very, very complimentary about this horse. How good do you think he is? Well, I, I've got no idea, really, because, you know, he did it easily enough. At the furlong pole, I thought he was going to scoot home and win really easily. Looked to me like he got a bit tired. I think he was in front a little bit too long. He was losing interest, losing concentration. I think he's very, very smart. But we're going to definitely find out in the pre-morning at Deauville how smart he is because he'll he'll need his he'll need to be really on the ball there. You know he's going to run against better horses than here. These horses were very very good, but they were all a little bit the same as him going into this race. And 
he has had to learn fast because he obviously blew the start, didn't he, at Nottingham, and then produced a remarkable performance to win. He did, and he beat a very good horse of Sir Michael Stouts that day, so that gave us a lot of confidence, and I think the figures, uh, you know, were good, strong enough to give us enough encouragement to come into this race rather than, than a novice. He's... Uh, I think he's a really good horse because he's so switched off, he's relaxed, his mind is very good. He jumped better from the gates today, still a little bit slow, we've done more gate schooling with him. But he's so switched off that, you know, even when you're saddling him, he just stands on three legs. He's, he's very relaxed, which is, which is good, and that's key, and I think he'll stay further. And unusual as well with a breeze up horse, um, you know. Yes, yes, they can be a little bit fizzy, but he's not. and. He breathes exceptionally well. Um, he was bought uh, by Sheikh Khalid and Anthony Shroud at the sales at the Craven Breeze Up. And we were very lucky that he, to be, for him to be allocated to us. Because if you get the good horses in your stable, you've got half a chance of doing well. I, I get that, but when the price tag is that hefty, is it, is it also you know, quite nerve-wracking? Well, it is, because uh, you don't want to bish your lines, really, like he nearly did at Nottingham. And yes, of course it is, because you know it makes you think twice about your campaign. Um, but I think with a horse like that, having won the way he did, he had to, he had to go and do something better. Um, and I was also suggesting he might always need a little bit of cut. Do you think that could be the case? Well, he, yeah, I mean, I think a little bit of juice in the ground suits him, but I think next year he'll go on quick ground. I think this year as a two-year-old will we'll keep him to, to sensible ground and not too firm because, you know, his bones still aren't quite mature enough to cope with really quick ground. Um, finally, looking ahead to our next race, which is the Gordon Stakes. Horse of yours, I really love chess piece. How is he? He's great. Um, he's a strong galloper. I think the trip is too short for him, but he's in good form. He'll love the ground. I think he'll be there or thereabouts. I mean, he'll keep grinding. He doesn't really quicken yet. He hasn't found that sort of fourth or fifth gear yet. I think that'll come next year. But he, and I think he's a really progressive horse and very good. And I think he'll go really well today. Do you have a ring around the St. Ledger in your mind? Well, I'm hoping he's going to be good enough right. to do that. We were thinking about running in the Geoffrey Freer. That was our preferred race. But when the rain came, we, the horse is so well, we had to come here. You know, timing-wise, the Geoffrey Freer would have been better for him. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's probably going to be rock-hard ground by the time we get to Newbury. And, and, and he definitely loves soft ground. Okay. Well, very best of luck and many congratulations with Bandy. Thank you very much, Thank Lily. You. Thanks. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.